So my name is Brittany Bertrand. I'm the Youth and Community Project Assistant at Métis Nation BC. I work in the Ministry of Youth and the program that I'm in charge of is uh, the Rock Forum or Revitalizing Our Culture Youth Forum. So Rock Forum is a youth program for Métis youth across the province between the ages of 15 and 30. They come together. Um, we for the past few years have done it at Strathcona Park Lodge, which is just outside Campbell River. Um, they have a beautiful venue there, which is very um, supportive of living off the land. Even their meal plans are very much um, no waste, so which is amazing. That's something that we really promote. Um, so when we bring the youth together, we bring uh, really amazing elders together and uh, knowledge keepers and facilitators to come in and uh, do workshops with us. So in this program, youth have an opportunity um, to connect with other youth from across the province that are Métis, that are learning about their culture. Some of them already know their culture and have been raised in it, so it's a really good mix and a really good opportunity for some of those youth that are more experienced to be more of a mentor to these youth. Um, when we do, we bring them in and we do a canoe journey. We do uh, various hikes, uh, plant identification with the youth. Some of the elders take it upon themselves to teach about spoons and how to play that and make it really fun and engaging. Uh, we teach about uh, medicines that they can use to help with mental health as well as various different ailments. Um, Depending on the time of the year, it can be really amazing where it's uh, you get the summer perspective on medicines growing, but also when we've done it um, in the later part of the year when it gets a little bit of cold, um, it's really cool that some of the elders are like, hey, this is how you can kind of survive in the winter months and, and what uh, the winter provides for us. So there's amazing opportunities there when we get these youth out. Uh, we try to make it as fun as possible, as engaging as possible, and not intimidating because we want to make sure that we're meeting these youth at where they're at, whether that's brand new and just discovering their culture and that reclaim piece to youth that are well experienced and ready to go to learn more. And they're um, wanting to even move into those leadership roles. So um, we have our MyBC committee attend. Um, they are a youth from across the province that represent each region. So we have region one, which is the Vancouver Island, region two, which is the lower mainland, region three is Thompson Okanagan, uh, region four is the Kootenai, region five is the, is, it's like Prince George area, so the center, uh, region six and region sevens are east and west. And they represent those youth. So they come and educate youth on how they can come out and learn how to be engaged, get active in their communities and be in those leadership roles. So Rock Forum is offered annually. So I believe this is either the fourth or fifth year that we've had it. Um, it's usually offered. We try to make it in the summer. Sometimes it's offered a little bit more of like a September, October, depending on what venues are available. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been really lucky with Strathcona Park Lodge that they've been really opening and accommodating to us um but yeah so it's we're this year will be in the summer we haven't announced dates yet so that's very secretive um but it will be at the same location and and very very amazing the forum is about four days so the the uh, first day and the last day are travel days, but we try to incorporate as much culture and support in those first two days as well. But it's more of a get to know you when you arrive and then those final goodbyes. So um, the, the meat and potatoes comes in the middle, um, the Saturday and Sunday, and it's usually a Friday through Monday event. A lot of our a lot of our connection to youth is of course social media. So it's on the website through our Facebook pages and uh, the Facebook group, but also within our communities. A lot of the youth hear about it at community events, whether they attend it or their parents. We try to promote that engagement for the youth that go out to these board meetings and community meetings and see what's going on because that's where you learn about the most stuff that happens. Um, a lot of it's word of mouth too. youth that experience the program. They go and tell their friends in the community that they also know that are Métis and say, hey, this is what I experienced. This is what I learned. You should check it out. And I feel that word of mouth is even more influential for these youth because a lot of them are trying to find out, am I Indigenous enough? I'm Métis, but I'm fair. As, as you can see, I'm blonde haired, blue eyed. So when they, they meet me, they're like, oh my gosh, we're the same. So it's amazing because we have very fair skinned Métis youth. We have very dark skinned, very Métis youth. So what I feel word of mouth when they talk to each other and share, hey, this is what I experienced. That's probably one of the most um, 
powerful returns that we receive. But community is very huge, too, when they're telling us, hey, we're getting a couple of youth together and we're going to come out. So, yeah, it's amazing. We also reach out to the school system and, and uh, network through them as well, as well as the Aboriginal support workers. We have a good relationship with the ones in B.C. and send out all that information out to them as well to get out to the youth. What I would like to share is... Um, mainly to the youth to just get out and be a part of your community. Reach out to your regional youth rep. They're very approachable. Um, you can send them an email and kind of see, hey, how can I get involved? If you don't know who your Métis Chartered community is, which I believe we have 39 across the province, reaching out to us to say, hey, I want to get involved, maybe not necessarily at the provincial level, but at the community level, how can I get involved? And we can connect them to the right channels. That's the same with any um, support workers or people that have youth in the their care or in their presence that they know are Métis and, and want to get involved is reach out to us, reach out to me, send me an email and say, hey, how can I get involved? Where can you lead me to? Because I definitely can connect them with the right people to get involved and following social media, following our website, it's got most up to date information on what's happening within the nation, whether that's programs we're offering. We also share various grant opportunities for youth and things like that where they can learn more about their culture. So when we get youth coming into the program, a lot of youth, probably the vast majority, don't know anything about their culture. They were told by a grandparent, told by a parent or somebody else in their family that, hey, we're Métis. And it's youth coming in, they're like, I don't know what this means for me. So they're very much uh, in that reclaim situation where it's like, I need to learn about this. I need my identity. And uh, yeah, it's an amazing experience watching them walk in. They're a little scared. They don't want to get to know anybody yet. They're, they're like, hey, do I fit in? Am I Indigenous enough? It's a constant question. Am I Indigenous enough? They come in, uh, they see other youth that are also in that same place. So it very much provides that community piece right off the bat of, hey, this is what everybody else is experiencing too. And then when we have the youth who are more experienced share their story and their journey from when they were learning about it, really helps the youth to uh, gain perspective on it so at the start they're like I have no idea what's going on and by the end they're like oh my gosh I need to learn more I need to get involved be a part of my community and it's the uh, the aha moment for them that hey I fit in um, it's not wrong of me to be learning at a later age if they're 15 if they're 30 and just learning it's like hey I can learn at any age. I mean, we have community members who are 60 years old just learning and they're getting involved. So um, I, I know majority of them are like, hey, I wish I had a forum for my age to get involved and learn too. So um, it's just, it's crazy seeing them come in and they're like, oh, I don't want to. And then when we're trying to get them to go, they're like, no, I don't want to leave. Take me with you. So um, the turnaround is amazing. And to see them come back out to various events and get involved with like regional youth events and wanting to volunteer, wanting to get involved, uh, wanting to get to know their elders and find out how they can get support there and how they can support our elders is huge, too. So it's a big turnaround and it's amazing to see. So, yeah. I think in Indigenous Perspectives is brought in um, by bringing youth back onto the land, getting to know our elders and traditional knowledge keeper, having that perspective of um, like throwing the Western view out and learning right off our land is huge for us. I mean, who knew that certain plants can help you cure different ailments who knew that you could use this so that way when you get a mosquito bite it will um, not itch so much um, rose hip tea what that does for your body and things like that so it's very much uh, getting back to grassroots knowledge and learning directly from what our land is providing to us is is very big for us um Elders are always going to be a huge part in these youth's life because they've been around for a long time. They have a lot to share that we don't necessarily know about now and never experienced. So it's gaining that perspective from them. It's also learning about um, why we are the way we are, why a lot of Métis people are now reclaiming their heritage, learning about things like residential schools, 60 scoops, um, what our people had to do back in the day because they were fair to, to avoid going to residential school, and um, why our families are so secretive about 
what's happened in in our generations right um a lot of youth are like i don't understand why we have this beautiful culture and my family didn't share it with me until now and um explaining to the youth and having elders share like this is why my family did it yours might not be exactly the same but very similar so it's uh aha moments uh, like all the time for these youth that oh wow now I know why this has happened or why this has happened and we always have a counselor available as well because we recognize that when we're bringing youth away from their communities and throwing them into the culture that it's not necessarily um Understood, understood that, hey, our Western views have that value too. Counseling is very Westernized. So having a counselor there to support, to make sure that, hey, you have what you need here. If you want to seek out an elder for support or go to a counselor for, for support, we have both available. And just uh, having youth around to create that identity and community for them is huge too. So it's a beautiful thing. <laughs>